so I wanted to make a video about the comments on Kennedy Hall's video breaking the news that there was um, a court case um, against Father Michael Scanlon and another priest for abuse in the 1970s. Um, there are a lot of inaccurate comments on this video, and it seems like nobody really has the information. Like this Kathleen Cross, and she says, there are a number of false and inaccurate statements in this, and no evidence to support the plaintiff claims of wrongdoing. Well, <clears throat> I that's, if you look into the case a bit, um, that's not what I came away with. Um, so, first of all, Kennedy did break the story, and I, and I tip my hat to him for doing that, but I didn't have some key information until I actually went and looked at the court documents myself. Now, he might have mentioned some of this stuff in the video. It was 54 minutes long, and I don't, you know, I only watched it once. Um, but first of all, that the boy and his mother and brothers, uh, his three brothers, they were living in the rectory with the priests. Now, maybe they were going to be homeless or something. They were very poor. They had nowhere to live, and the priests thought it was a good idea to take them in. But this is a crazy, insane boundary violation to have a woman, a single mother, and her, th her four young sons living with a bunch of priests. That's a totally insane idea that would never happen now that we know more. The 70s were, wow, they were really a different time. But so I, I didn't know that until I read the court documents. And, you know, we know that that is true because <clears throat> uh, there has been a motion to dismiss by the diocese and the judge uh, overruled it. And the case has gone on and there's been many motions since then. Um, they would have just said, no, they never lived there. It's all it's all fake. <laughs> if it was fake, but no, they must have really lived there, which is insane to me. But so, <clears throat> um, let me just read some of these comments as I go through here. Um, and I, I can talk about the other things that I, I didn't really catch from Kennedy's video. Okay, so this, um, this comment, I had only the most positive experience with Father Michael Scanlon for the 13 years I was around him. I have never known him to be anything but one of the most pure and holy priests I've known. I haven't watched the video. I was only told about it, and I'm very saddened about the, such coverage. Please be discerning and prudent about spreading unverified information prematurely. And then this Crusader 333 AD says... Totally agree. I read the lawsuit online. The case was from the 70s and involved another man. It was filed in 2020 and hasn't progressed. That's a sign that it could be a money grab because New Jersey just did away with the statute of limitations. I don't want to gloss over potential abuse, but there have been many fake cases. Okay, so I read the lawsuit online. Okay, Crusader, well... You didn't read it very carefully, did you? Um, the case was from the 70s and involved another man. Well, it involved Father Scanlon and another priest, Father Hogan, who the diocese has now admitted was an abuser. Um, so that's a relevant fact. It was filed in 2020 and hasn't progressed. Well, that's just because Crusader doesn't have access to the actual docket. Um, there's been tons of progression in the case since 2020. There's been a motion to dismiss, as I've already mentioned. There's been actions. There's been cross-examinations of defendants. There's been all types of things that have happened. And now the case has been merged, um, consolidated into several other abuse cases against the diocese. So that makes it a little bit hard to see what exactly the status of the case is now, and it could take more time, but it is definitely progressing, and, and it has moved since 2020 many times. <clears throat> okay, that's a sign that this could be a money grab. Okay, 
you can look into the accuser. I mean, when you read, as this guy said he did, when you read the initial complaint online, it has his name and address. So then you just look up that information on Google. You can find out all types of stuff about him, and I did. His name is Michael Lopez, and he owns a very successful construction business or a renovation business. It's a multi-million dollar company, and he has a $900,000 house. Um, he has no need for a money grab. Um, that, that makes no sense at all for somebody who's been as successful as this guy. To be honest, it's, it's gross to suggest such a thing about this man. And then also, if you read the cart documents, you would know that he told his mother when he was a little boy about the abuse from Father Scanlon. And she went to the priest at the rectory they were living at and told them, and they dismissed it as stories from a child. So then, um, in 1996, when he was 27 years old, he went back to that parish and spoke to the parish priest. And he told them about the abuse from both of the other, from Scanlon and Hogan. And the priest did nothing. They covered it up. Nothing happened. So that's why this is being filed in 2020 after they're both dead, because he already reported it twice. And imagine how hard it was for him as a little boy. You know, everybody looks up to Father Scanlon. Everybody loves him. Everybody's praising him. And he has to tell on him. And then when he's 27 years old, how humiliating that would be. But now he's coming back for a third time and reporting the abuse and just hoping that finally some justice will happen. So, yeah, I, I just wanted to respond to some of these comments, some of the misinformation that's going around. I, I, I really feel like um, I didn't get all the information that I should have from the video originally, and that's why I wanted to put this up.